Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Reviews. I hope that you're having a great day today. Today, we're going to be talking about HG Wells. Yes, I'm almost done with them. Uh, the topic in this one is The Invisible Man, which was narrated by Sophie... Really, I should go to a pronunciation class. Okanato? Okanato? <laughs> I'm just, I'm horrible with that. But anyway, again, H.G. Wells, incredible writer. I don't know how I got this far in life and just didn't know. I thought that I had read some of them. I was wrong. <laughs> so my sincerest apologies to everybody. Uh, so The Invisible Man, the, the narration, of course, is, as I've said previous, all of them are good. Uh, there's nothing really distracting in there. There's there's no pops clicks. There's no horrible cuts or edits. And if they did do the over to repair things, then it really wasn't noticeable. It was clean. Uh, but The Invisible Man, another story that's been mistold by popular media. I'm wondering if that's going to be all of his stories. What I know The Invisible Man to be is either a person that is involved in an accident with science and then becomes either a pervert, stalker, or some kind of sexual deviant. And, and yeah, I know, but it's that's the only thing I've ever seen about The Invisible Man. I've never seen The Invisible Man where it was done in the spirit of which H.G. Wells has wrote. Now, if you guys have seen one of those where it is in that spirit, please tell me about it because I would love to actually watch it uh, because that would be really cool to see. Don't get me wrong, I mean, you know, Hollywood and, and all that kind of stuff, they do what they do, but it would be like seeing that this movie has got the same name as this, and it's about race cars, but the actual book had something more over to do with tardigrades. I mean, it, it's that night and day difference between them. So in this story, if you've never read it before, it's a really decent read, and it's a good thought experiment as well. Quick preface, let's think about the time period that this was wrote, early 1800s-ish, and it was so different, you know, if, but there's some things that are still true to today. Like if mankind, womankind, people as a whole don't understand something, it scares them. If they get scared, then they want to, what, run or fight. That's kind of the mentality that we see in here. But of course, we've got to remember religion was a much bigger thing at that time period as well. So if it wasn't something that was ordained, etc., then it was viewed as evil or satanic or bad or whatever. Uh, so let's let's take a little journey here real quick with the Invisible Man, shall we? Actually, he is here. He's right there. You just can't see him. It starts out with the author trying to give us an impression of the characteristics of the person that's doing this stuff. He seems to be cranky. He seems to be very absorbed into his work. Uh, and there's a lot of like shenanigans that go on. Uh, and it's not like a playful thing. It's more over a he understands the time that he's in. If something like this were to happen today, let's say that somebody were to figure out how to make a person completely invisible without actual technology, like the shields that you can stand behind that will warp the light from around so that you're not actually there if you're far enough away, etc. You know, camouflage being what it is. But what if that person turned themselves absolutely invisible? That light goes through them and you just don't see them at all. There's all kinds of little questions that I would have too. Like if they eat, would you see the food go down their, their esophagus, which you should, and then go around the tum tum and then down the intestines and all that kind of stuff. I mean, so they wouldn't, the story, it starts out like that and there's like a, a caregiver for the room or kind of like a hostess, if you will of sorts that is always checking up on him to make sure if he wants food or needs something or if there's a balance that needs to be paid, she will try to talk with him to do what all the, whatever. So that's the impression that's given. And he's like, look, just leave me alone. You know, if it costs this, just do it, just get it done. So that's another thing that's reinforcing his, his character to us. And 
We'll skip ahead a little bit. Suffice it to say, he does turn himself invisible. He is being hunted by people that are staying in the tavern and or police and or other people as well uh, because they are scared of this individual that is magically showing up in the room and then disappearing, but nobody ever sees them come and go. I'm thinking that a commonplace practice back in the 1800s for like bed and breakfasts or taverns or places that you would stay that would have a room that you would rent is that there was always a door you were supposed to use and you sh out of politeness you would announce that you were coming or going so that the people that were there would know so that if somebody breaks into your room or they hear some scuffling then they can let you know about it you know it kind of went both ways but they were getting more and more frustrated because he would come and go but they would never see him come or go and then we fast forward a bit. Now he's being hunted by police and by the people that are in the tavern. By hunted, I mean they're figuring out his pattern that he's coming or he's here or he's there and they're, they're trying to capture him for their own reasons, which I mean surely it's going to be that they're going to kill him because they don't understand what's happening and it's got them scared. Now our invisible man, he ends up running into an old colleague of his that he went to college with and starts to explain the situation to him. He's afraid to sleep, he's afraid to do this, he's afraid to do that because he knows that even though he's had a great scientific breakthrough in the story, that if he lets these people know what's going on, then they're gonna persecute him and kill him for what he's done. Not seeing the value in, or the just amazement in what had been achieved be it by accident or on purpose or whatever scientific means that would have been there and that's the thing that i enjoy about hg wells's books are is excuse me that some of them he will give an explanation for it was really cool to see the way that this invisible man character was trying to explain to his old college colleague that this is what got me here i was thinking about the way that if you have glass and it's polished on one side, you can see through it, but if it's not polished, then you can't see through it. And what would it take to get us so we were that one-sided thing where we were transparent because we're mostly made out of water and this and this and this. And so it was kind of cool to see that explanation and where he was going with it. And it wasn't a big intuitive leap either. It's not like some of the stuff that we put up with from popular media these days because, you know, we have all this technology now and we can do all these things to kind of add to our stories, but that's just it. That should just be adding to the enrichment of the stories, not necessarily telling the story. But yeah, that's, that's my own personal thing about that. So it was a fun read. It was a good read. It didn't indeed get that emotional reaction of me that I was siding with him and I was like, go, you go because I can I could see that I could see where he was coming from and how valid what he was experiencing in the story was to him so well done HG Wells it's much appreciated and thank you so if I'm going to say the typical thing of is it worth your time efforts and energies most certainly it is if you have a chance to just pick it up and read it on its own go for it it's certainly worth it because there's just that it's just that well wrote uh, it was just that that well done. So I would love to know what you think about it. If you've ever read it, please feel free to let me know down there in that place that YouTube is starting to try to hide everywhere so that you can't necessarily find it. But if you can't find it, hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. If you did a little tap dance on it, let me know. I'd love to hear what dance you decided to do. And if I did something in here or you saw an edit that you liked, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button because every little bit like that will help. Now, I'm not sure which one of the videos from over here that's coming in that you would pick, but if you happen to pick one of those two, guess what? I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Peace. You're still here?